Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about Chris Evans's profile and emotional authority in his human design. I already talked about the fundamentals of human design in my first video, so if you don't know what that is, don't know how the charts look like, go back to my first video. And if you watched that already, welcome to the next part. We're going to dive deep, 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 deep down into Chris Evans's way of making decisions um, into his relationship scenarios. <laughs> and Chris, if you're watching this, I hope I'm not putting my finger onto something that you don't want to look at because um, I think it's very important that you realize what I have to say today. So if you haven't gotten your chart yet, go to the link below that I put in the description because you can get it for free. And whatever I'm going to talk about today, you can check your chart if you have it too, if you if like the two numbers in your profile uh, match the one or the three, which I'm going to be talking about today, perfect. That just goes for you as well. If you have an emotional authority too, perfect. <laughs> this just goes for you as well. I'm trying to create my content as coaching content today. So you can take away whatever I'm going to be talking. You just take what you need. You leave everything that doesn't fit. I've been trying to get my dogs calm for 30 minutes now. Now some one of them is drinking again. I won't start this video again. <laughs> so you just have to live with those tiny idiots walking around where you can hear their paws. Perfect imperfect me. Okay, guys, let's dive into Chris Evans' profile. Your profile are the two numbers in your chart. If we could describe the profile as such. If you see your life as a piece of drama in the theater, then your profile would be the role that you play, the way your character works. Um, Chris, you share the profile one three with, with me, which is one of 12 possible combinations. The first number always describes the conscious role we have in life. Of this, we are aware and we consciously act like it. And the second number is the uncon unconscious behavior, the part where people describe us as being that, why we don't know we actively do that. So these things just repeatedly seem to happen, but we can't backtrack them unless we make them conscious, which we are about to today. The one in human design is designed to dive deep into the fundamentals of every system, find every fault, be it in a political system or a relationship or a friendship. We as ones are designed to find every mistake in everyone, <laughs> everything. We are very analytic in this and we like to argue about it. And we soon come to a perspective where we don't find sense in everything just not working out. We just can't seem to find the person that can meet our expectations because the zoom for their weaknesses is just too big in us. We think nobody can follow us into our deep states, into our emotion, into our love for life itself, in spreading our heart, just serving the world, giving ourselves open-hearted. Um, yeah, in our higher self, we develop a very generous, very compassionate way of dealing with this also by seeing the beauty in everyone and everything. And that kind of comforts us. All of this combined might lead to us being the ones that do not end up with a family in the 30s out of sheer disappointment and having found faults in every connection. And the conclusion that something is apparently just wrong with us because everybody else seems to be lucky finding their persons, settling down, but yeah, somehow we don't as the three is unconscious. This is not conscious behavior. It just happens, okay? So when this has happened a few times, like a few relationships um, have come to an end where we can't seem to find, can't seem to backtrack the reasons, can't seem to find to change us. So we instead turn to give ourselves for the greater good. This is typical three. We kind of give up. And we say, okay, then I'm going to serve the world because we draw a lot of energy from that too. So 
the problem about this is when we imprison our hearts to save ourselves from being heard with the aim of being less vulnerable and less disappointed, we kill courage and we kill deep connection and we kill our hopes and we deserve this deep connection and we're constantly looking for it even when we're telling ourselves we're not, even when we're getting a dog. I love my dogs, they're my family, but they're also kind of an excuse not to go into painful human relationships anymore. So we as one thirds, we want to understand, find out, learn more. We can grab a book and not be seen for the rest of the day. <laughs> we love studying, experimenting, combination with the three again, that, which the three is the adventurer. So we have to learn by doing which is a problem. I will repeat that because it's very important. We learn by making mistakes. We learn by trial and error. Um, you gotta try, if you're a one three like me and Chris is, you gotta try everything <laughs> to find out what it is, how it feels like, what the nature of it is. So that shows in speeding tickets, broken bones, burnt skin, you get where I'm going, right? Um, I just have to find out how far I can go. Could be a motto, like could match my tattoo, probably. I have to, I have to find out by doing it. I can't learn by um, a role model. I can't learn by someone telling me that something is the way it is. Nope, I just have to try it. Um, we initiate arguments and fighting mostly with people near us, just because we wanna dive deep into the core of things. We want to understand someone. We wanna reflect upon us with them, them alone, us alone. We wanna just really get to know people and that can come out as permanently searching for mistakes and faults and addressing them, which does really drive people crazy. So what does that mean for us now? A person like us will experience all of this in their reality again and again. If I expect people to hurt me, as the law of attraction says, I'm going to meet exactly those people. They're going to be attracted by me. My outside is only my mirror from, from the inside. So we as threes need to realize we have to make mistakes. We have to do them. And in, we need to develop. How are we going to develop and learn um, if we don't make mistakes? So that's what the three is. It's the adventurer. And please know, whether you're a conscious or an unconscious three, conscious threes tend to be more okay with them stumbling through life, having adventures all over and, and just, yeah, make mistakes. Unconscious threes, like I am and like Chris is, we kind of get annoyed and frustrated with it. So that's why I'm gonna say mistakes are never mistakes, okay? So mistakes are the greatest way of experiencing yourself in this world. We are designed to make mistakes. We are designed to be with people and hurt or get hurt. That's how we learn about life. We are designed to find ourselves in other people <laughs> and we need to find those people who want to be part of our journey through life and that will always consist of mistakes and great ideas so yeah I feel like I'm only talking about mistakes which I mean I can I can talk I'm going to talk about myself for a second um, <laughs> I've been talking I don't know I do that often anyways when I want to do something until I succeed, it will always have to go wrong in some way before. I got used to that, <laughs> but it's so frustrating and it's normal. So I grow and I grow and I grow and mistakes are my challenge offered by the universe to become who I truly am, to find out what I am not and to choose which version of myself do I wanna live? Nothing, there's nothing we ever have to regret. Everything needed to happen exactly the way it did for you and for me to turn out exactly the way we are. 
Nothing else could have happened. You made good decisions, believe me. I'll read that again because it's so important. You made good decisions. Everything turned out exactly the way it was supposed to be, okay? I found a lot of peace in realizing that this place where I am right now is not somehow a mistake made by the universe or by myself. I wasn't somehow missed or forgotten um, in me being on my own. It's just simply my design and I just never realized it. And I could just never explain to anyone how I work and that me diving deep and, and being all analytical and finding reasons why I couldn't be with someone or why something just wouldn't work out. Me argumenting about all those things, I just could never explain to someone that this is the way I work and that it has nothing to do with, with them. It's not their fault. It's just my hunger for, for knowledge, for finding out, for diving deep. So yeah. So I couldn't ever tell people how to interact with me when I am in my mood. And I think, Chris, you know the feeling. <laughs> we once, we are a little bit of a restless soul, which makes sense when we see that the one three really is all about herself. Sounds harsh, but let's just accept it. Um, the profiles one, two, three, experience life through themselves. The profiles four to six experience life through the relationships with people. So if you have two numbers that are one, two or three, then your life will mainly be, your life experience will mainly be made through yourself and not through, your, through you in a relationship to someone. And that's when you, Chris, actually can relate to a role of yours that is a narcissistic drug addict. When I was in my 20s, at some point, I feared to be narcissistic as well. But I found out that if we ask ourselves whether we are, we cannot actually be. <laughs> Narcissists are not aware of themselves having a disorder. But I just thought so because I felt that, well, yeah, all my decisions were always made in my own interest. And unconscious manifestors, like we are, in their lower selves, are 90% about themselves, go through the world hurting people they love or don't love by showing everyone that they are not enough, which then leads to them mistrusting themselves and thinking that something in them is too much, too wrong. And then we try to protect people from us by not connecting anymore. And that's painful. After a few years of personal development, though, we like ourselves <laughs> in our higher selves. We become calmer and yeah, more disidentified, I would say. And we like to be with ourselves in our higher self a lot. We go through life, we collect experiences, not through relationships, not through other people. <laughs> we are just designed like this and it's perfectly fine. Why we go into projects or relationships with the deep hope of finding a rock solid fundament. Everyone three <laughs> is gonna say a rock solid fundament. That sounds just awesome. That we can rely on. We cannot stop checking the quality of the ground we're standing on. If something or someone doesn't feel safe, we will find a mistake in them. We will become bored. We will find another good reason why this is not gonna work out and we're gonna be out of this. Don't panic now, please, because this is only when we engage against the better knowing or if we are forced into things. Like if our ratio decided that this relationship or friendship is a good idea and will serve us, but our guts have already said, nope, sir. And we do it anyways, against better knowledge we will know right away if something is going to work or not. And if we follow our guts that say, this person is actually the right person for you, then we don't have to try to find the mistake in it. We love to dive deep in conversation and we love to experience the depth of life and of meaning. And we often tend to fall in love with potential, 
not with reality, which is hard for our partners as they will immediately try to live up to our picture of them. Conflict guaranteed, catastrophe guaranteed, because yeah, we're gonna end up disappointed. I talked a lot about a manifesto's disappointment in the last video. So if you wanna go back, you can. Small talk is not ours and superficial surroundings sicken us. We tend to jump into new exciting things and we tend to hurt people by just losing interest in them. We invented the term naivete as our good core and our good heart really do wanna believe in the greatness of that person in front of us. And then again, disappointment. And the C pile, if you don't know what the C pile is, go back to my first video, please. What happens in our later years, like mid thirties or early forties is the need of stability becoming stronger and stronger and our priorities change. Yay, finally. <laughs> At this point of our lives, our profile chooses stability over adventure. And this actually is going to be the biggest adventure ever for us because now we can settle down. The most rewarding moment to realize if I listen to my guts and choose wisely, I don't have to choose between my freedom and my inner drive of settling down because those are the two things that always clash. I can combine it and there comes for us manifestors, peace and bliss. We can finally find an ending to what feels like our curse for our partners after the breakup, it's always the one after us. I don't know if you know that. I've had that with like four or five relationships. It was always the one after me. It's kind of a joke with my friends. It was always the one after me. Like we would separate, I would throw them out <laughs> for some reason why this couldn't work. And they would like, it, it would take a week or two, maximum a month. And they would find the one. And I would be like, what's wrong with me? It's my fault. Oh my God, yeah. I don't have a good explanation for that, but I think Chris, you experienced that too, that more than once in a life, this just happens. <laughs> I don't know. I love to self-pity me in those moments. And um, yeah, what can I do about it? Get to know my design, follow my strategies. I'm gonna to come to your strategies in a second. Just wait a minute. As a one three, the best people for you to spend your life with, and I strongly advise you to look out for these profiles. It's an absolute fine thing to write onto Tinder. I'm looking for a one three manifest. <laughs> it's gonna narrow your chances down, but if you find one, then you're gonna find someone who knows how you are who you, you don't need, I don't know, you don't need to explain yourself to, you don't need to make compromises. You find, you find a mixture of, of I mean, you, you probably even have like, the same needs. So find another one three or a four six, okay? These people will just get you. What a gift not having to explain someone how you work and not making compromises all the time, but instead you have matching needs, people who love you for who you are, not despite who you are. You deserve that. We all deserve that. Let's come to your authority. You have an emotional authority, as I said about a million times. The authority describes the way you should, should is in brackets, you should make decisions. Most people do have an emotional authority. That's why most people will probably now say, oh, I'm gonna listen carefully with an emotional authority in your human design, which we, Chris, you and I have too. We soon learn that in our emotional wave, we can hurt people so bad to protect ourselves, be it friends or lovers or parents or whoever, that we don't recognize ourselves afterwards when the drama has ended. In that moment, during the wave, it feels absolutely true and real, but it doesn't anymore after the wave went by. We can't believe how we could have become this person that leaves, as I said in the last video, I think I used the term scorched ground. I hope that is a thing in English as well. I'm German, by the way. I hope that is a thing um, because that's what we leave. Um, how could we have become this person? How could we have thought that this was 
the truth that we actually felt that when the next morning we don't feel like that at all but we already fucked up these emotional waves give us the superpower to connect to life itself so deeply that we can find endless beauty in nature, in the smallest things, in music, in art, in poetry. And this makes us such deep beings that sometimes we may seem like aliens to others who don't share this authority. And this emotional wave that we experience in drama, mostly in romantic love, which a big part of us enjoys, because it's so highly emotional and we feel so much. And I mean, our brain is addicted to biochemical drama. So we kind of love our drama. <laughs> we feel like everything that's happening in us is true and we need to tell the other right now, which we should not do. We shouldn't do that. Because what feels absolutely true during these waves never is true. Wait for it to go by. Act and drop conclusions if needed from your emotional clarity. Oftentimes people cannot follow us into these deep modes and we realize it and we conclude that something again must be wrong with us. So the, I think the manifester, the one three and the emotional authority are those people who most of the, those designs that mostly think that something is wrong with us. It has to do something with us because everybody else manages, just not us. It has to do something with us. <laughs> that we are apparently not able to lead happy and deeply connected relationships because something is wrong with us. This emotional wave, when it shows up as negative, I'll put it as a quote, as I'm not a fan of judging feelings or emotions as positive or negative. Um, so if, they are, if you feel like they are negative, like frustration, anger, uh, uh, whatever, the whole world will look black for you. Everything um, is gonna go into this gray cloud. So that's when we enjoy melancholy, we enjoy Patalini, and we enjoy all the, the depth of life we find um, in, in books, in authors, in Hesse, in Rilke. Um, we find it in, 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 in the brain picking. We find it in, yeah, wherever, wherever, wherever we wanna go, if we can be alone with this. We have such an intense way of deeply, deeply, deeply going into these emotions and enjoying the misery. I love the term enjoying the misery because that's exactly, exactly what we do. Something that people without an emotional authority will probably never understand. If your emotional wave is positive, the whole world seems pink and everything is wonderful. Um, <laughs> usually happens after three to five beers when you just go around telling everyone how much you love them, even though you just met them. That's, that's the pink emotional wave. You need to realize we are victims of this emotional wave. And the best way to cope with it is meditation or sleep. It's not alcohol. It's not drawing conclusions. It's not starting consequences of big decisions, nope. <laughs> we find gates through this um, from Eckhart Tolle, from Deepak Chopra, from Dr. Joe Dispenza. We use their teachings because they lift us higher than this small wave can. It puts us above this wave so we can look down on ourselves, see what's happening and realize, mm -hmm, I have emotions. I am not emotions. So um, you disidentify with this wave. Where we felt wrong before, we understand now what's happening and not having access to these tools, which you, Chris, thank God you do. And that's why they are so important for you. That's why they help you with your anxiety because you stop identifying yourself with the thoughts and with the emotions you have, which brings so much clarity, which brings rooting and, and just, yeah, you, you can actually um, manage your life. You, you feel a bit more control over your life. So if you're, you're not having access to these tools, as an emotional emotional authority, 
you can fuck up relationships pretty bad by hurting the ones that you love while while we're still trying to explain how we are why we are like that and we're feeling misunderstood or people expect us to change to be less intense to be less complicated to be less nagging about stuff what comes out of that is usually that after five six seven eight nine times either people are fed up with us or we don't feel seen or understood and things have to break up if we feel stuck in there there's no change no change even after talking about it we burn the house down we just leave because we can as manifestors we can we're good by ourselves again the sea pile again the disappointment so anyways just a quick tip for all of you have an emotional authority when being on your emotional wave either enjoy it or go to sleep <laughs> don't make decisions just go to sleep we're not wrong we're just special and it's so important that through this we learn to mistrust ourselves in relationships to others and we learn to protect them from a deep connection to us because we fear we will hurt them when not being under control. This is what cuts us deepest because we have such an open big heart and we feel that we are so able to give so much love, such devotion to someone and yet we're not allowing ourselves to really connect. One very painful thing that probably everyone three knows is the realization that I can hurt people so bad by just being who I am and there's nothing I felt in those moments, nothing that I could do about it. And I wish I had had these solutions, the, this knowledge about my design early in my life because, yeah. When problems arise, we try to solve them. Manifestors usually can't do that. But if they continue, we lose hope. We as manifestors don't necessarily need other people and we feel full. I mean, if I can be free, why wouldn't I want to be free? So we just leave, licking our wounds, adding onto the sea pile. At the same time, the deep wish of someone coping with that, supporting that and taking this as an advantage rather than a disadvantage or even as a handicap, as I sometimes address it, the wish for that is growing with every relationship where we can't find this. So frustration and anger grows, anger mostly, as the lower self theme of a manifesto. And we get more and more disappointed as, as there seems to be no good reason why this just doesn't work for us when everybody else seems to manage. Peace for us is then found in introspection, in developing deep love for ourselves and most important, compassion for everyone around us and the whole world. When we as one three manifestors learn to stop constantly criticizing ourselves and instead take us as we are and we find a match that understands and loves us for who we are, we are in heaven. And this is not someone who understands us and wants us despite all that we are, but because we are who we are. And at best, because they know how it is to be like that. We love our emotions. We love bathing in sadness, happiness, excitement, adventure, love and connection. And we ourselves are always able to rise these feelings out of nowhere. Just give us good deep quote, a piece of good music. We are the lunatic dancers through our houses. And we need other people to make us feel this because this feels true. And we wanna share this depth with our beloved people. That's like, that's the dream. This is how we experience life. And if this is not happening through our partner, we can barely take it. This is such a deep pain. And of course, this is mostly happening in an unconscious setting, but maybe you do have these aha moments that I had when I found out about my design and scanned my past relationships for this. For us manifestors, it's so important to be able to define ourselves new every day. And we need to be with someone who has the same need. As not many people feel this need because we're only 8%. We tend to tell ourselves that something is wrong with us, which is not the truth. I can't say this often enough. I know I repeated that, but it's really, it comes from my heart. Today, 
I having an emotional authority, I'm an enthusiastic crier. I stare at the night sky for hours and moved by too many things immediately. <laughs> I never used to allow myself to be that, to live to that and to fear that. Between my 20s and 30s, as I thought being strong in this world meant to not let anything come close to you and hurt you, uh, to not be vulnerable, to cope and be cool with everything, to fight through everything and be successful in a mad world. Don't show weakness. I'm a strong person, strong woman that doesn't need anyone. Yeah, right. I managed that. <laughs> I lived and cared for my own for my own farm. I worked as a teacher at a full-time job. I cared for my animals, my job, my NGO. But it came with a high price and made me very sick. And I think it's a life lesson to learn to care well for ourselves and for others. And if we manifestors are aware of this, that we don't need anyone, but we don't have to be able to do it on our own. <laughs> we can just explain to people how we work. And in my case, in my emotional wave, I can be, I can be quite intense in that. Just let me sleep in your arms for 30 minutes. I will be just fine. I will be just fine. It's that easy. I wish someone had told me before, I mean, before I fucked up my engagement and every relationship after that, by being too strong, too emotional, too expecting high standards, I expect them from everyone, mostly myself. And then as a coping mechanism to shut down, to disengage, to quit, to leave. So I don't need anyone to feel good and okay, I don't. But nowadays I just love to be in relation to people and as a chance, as a chance of discovering myself, discovering who I am, my projections, my wounds, and outgrow and hear them. We people are social beings, so let's not pretend we're not. Um, I think we're constantly changing. And also that is one of my biggest adventures that life has to offer for us. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do it like me. You don't have to die two, two, two times to, to find out that you're actually a tender, very vulnerable being that loves to live exactly those sides of herself. And that's not easy for me. That's my biggest challenge from being a strong and invincible, cool, hard person to be the real me, like loving, warm-hearted, uh, serving the world around me, serving the people I love. And my only goal in life, and maybe you wanna, I know, I know, I, I repeat the sentence very often because people like to hear it from me. And whenever people hear it for the first time, they go, huh, because it might not make sense a lot in the beginning, but then again, you know, there's a long way to go if you wanna go this path. So my only goal is to be a bit more vulnerable, a bit more open with every day that comes and goes. And that's the most challenging thing for a one three and at the same time, the most rewarding. So that is exactly the pathway we have seen you, Chris, developing and following in your past years. And I love being a witness of you growing more and more into your higher self because you have so much to give. You have so much to, to expect from life. And I really do hope you didn't, didn't stop dreaming your dreams because it's never too late. So everyone, you're still here. I hope you gained hope through this video. If you're a one three, a manifester, have an emotional authority, I hope that I could give you some faith back because please dare to dream big. Everything is possible in this life, believe me. I really hope every one of us who does have the dream of having a family one day, didn't give it up yet. You deserve everything you dream of. Next time, in my next video, I'm gonna be talking about the centers and the gates and the channels. These three things is a lot, 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 lot of information. And at the same time, 
um, it's gonna open up so many aha moments for you, Chris, and for the people wanting to know you better because that's where the stuff actually gets juicy. Okay, people, I leave you like this. Have the best day, evening, morning, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm gonna be back soon and yeah, see you again around. Bye-bye.